Okay, in the last lesson, we learned about subgame perfect equilibrium in sequential games. In this lesson, we're going to go through an example finding subgame perfect equilibrium or the subgame perfect equilibrium by doing what I called in the last lesson is known as backward induction. So what I drew here is something that is commonly called the centipede game. I guess because it looks like a centipede, but I always thought centipede had legs on both sides. Anyway, it's what they call it, and that's what I'm sticking with. So the, the idea of the game is very simple. It's a game between player one and player two, and they alternate making decisions. And the decision they make is to either stop or keep going. So player one gets the first choice, first option to stop. If he stops, both players get nothing. However, if he chooses to keep going, player two then gets the choice to either stop or keep going. If player two chooses to stop, player one gets negative one and player two gets four. Again, I wrote up here, player one, player two, and I guess we could put the parentheses here again to remind you these are the payoffs where the top one is always going to be player one. So in the third step, player one makes a decision again. If he chooses to stop, he gets a payoff of six, and player two gets a payoff of three. If he chooses to keep going, player two makes a decision to either stop or keep going. If player two chooses to stop, player one gets a payoff of five, and player two gets a payoff of ten. If player two chooses to keep going, player one gets one final decision. If he chooses to stop, he gets a payoff of 21, and player two gets a payoff of one. If he chooses to keep going, the game ends, and they both get a payoff of 20. So we see that if they both choose to keep going the whole way through, they'll each get a payoff of 20. What we're going to see, unfortunately, is that this, under full rationality assumptions, I'm ruining the punchline here, but this will never happen. And we're going to see this through backwards induction. So let's suppose we're player one, and he got all the way here. Does he choose to stop or to keep going? Well, if he keeps going, he gets a payoff of 20, but if he chooses to stop, he gets a payoff of 21. So that one extra payoff is going to encourage him to say, stop. So if player one gets here, he's going to stop. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write 21, 1 up here. And what this represents now is what happens to player two if it were to choose to keep going knowing that player one will stop because it's in player one's best interest to stop. So now we go here and we say, okay, player two, are you going to stop or keep going? Well, if he keeps going, he only gets a payoff of one because he knows player one will choose stop. But if player two chooses to stop, he'll get a payoff of 10. So player two will choose stop because 10 is better than one. So I'm going to put up here the five and the 10. And we repeat the same thing for player one. If player one gets here it, and it chooses to keep going, well, it knows it'll only get a payoff of five because it knows if it keeps going, player two will choose to stop because player two knows if it chooses to keep going, it would only get a payoff of one. So player one is considering the value of five to keep going or the value of six, the payoff of six to stop. Since six is greater than five, player one will choose to stop. So I'll write the payoffs here again, and now player two has another decision. If it chooses to keep going, it knows that player one will choose to stop and it would only get a reward or a payoff of three. If it chooses to stop, it'll get a payoff of four. So player two will choose to stop because four is better than three. And finally, in the first stage of the game, player one either chooses to stop or to keep going. Well, it knows that if it chooses to keep going, it'll get a payoff of negative one because player two will choose to stop. But if it chooses to stop, it'll just receive zero. So player one will choose stop. So the subgame perfect equilibrium in this game, we show that at every decision node, it's always in a player's best interest to choose stop assuming that the player acting after them will always act in their best interest. So although if the players could all just say keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, they would get a payoff of 20 each. But because the subgame perfect equilibrium is for player one to choose stop here, and therefore player two to choose stop here, and player one to choose stop here, and so on, the subgame perfect equilibrium 
gives a payoff of 0, 0. Very sad. So this is subgame perfect equilibrium and how we can apply what we call this backward induction.